Buffalo Bills 2022 roster grades. Here we go. And what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another fall. Hope you guys um, like it, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy. Of course. Um, today, uh, well, I'll just restart this because right now the um, or what is it called? Uh, we'll sh score update. Uh, couple games last night. Uh, Washington, of course, uh, Washington uh, lost to Kansas City for 24 14. Uh, Tennessee beat uh, Tampa Bay 13 to 3. Las Vegas beat Miami 15 13. San Francisco beat Minnesota 17 7. The Steelers beat the Jaguars 16 15. Dallas beat uh, the Los Angeles 32 18. And Cleveland lost to the Eagles 21-20, and uh, there's two, um, and tonight there's, um, well, yeah, NFL Network, Bengals and Giants, uh, 7 o'clock, and then, of course, uh, and then there's uh, NFL Preseason on Fox, Sunday night game, 8 o'clock, uh, Ravens versus Cardinals, then we look at uh, Monday night football um, preseason, we got the Falcons and Jets on ESPN, and if you didn't know, if you fall, if you want to follow up, uh, basically, uh, yeah, Mitchu shot, yeah, Mitchu was, I guess he was good, uh, and then, uh, but, uh, Tom Brady, uh, very weird situation as well, but yeah, that, um, we can actually, like, look at the box score here, we'll probably do that in a second, and we'll go all the way over, uh, Mitchu, 14 of 17, 142 yards, that's good, uh, someone had, like, a bomb, I think that was a different game, oh, yeah, uh, Devon Allen, uh, a 55 yard touchdown, that was good, for Philadelphia, that's cool. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's the score update. Let's get right into the video. As always, starting out with quarterbacks, Josh Allen, uh, a plus. Um, he's uh, second or first. Uh, you could argue him as the best quarterback in the NFL. That's all you really need to know. He is um the most versatile quarterback in the NFL as well. He can he does everything really well if you want to be honest. But he's an elite runner. Uh, now that though, he's a big dude, and he has the best arm in the NFL too, like elite arm. Uh, Case Keenum, uh, Case Keenum's not a bad backup. Like he's been he was solid last year and solid his whole career really. Not the, of course the best, but still. Matt Barkley, typical third string guy, veteran, not good starting, but he's a veteran, no system. Okay, A plus. Like I gave it to him last time. Uh, he's top five quarterback. He's just like so so good. Time for his running back position. Okay, Devin Singletary. In 2020, he was horrible. Last year, he was actually pretty good. I just don't, I don't, in my opinion, I don't want, I, I personally don't like Devin Singletary as a runner. For the simple fact that he's just not consistent. Is he efficient? Yes, he gets good runs. But when you look at it, he's an explosive back. He could be even more explosive if he hit, if he hit the hole better. Doesn't hit the hole uh, great. Not only that, though. In the receiving game, he does struggle at points to really get downfield. Uh, and his route running is really inconsistent as well. But look at yards, four rounds of yards. That's kind of he is. He breaks tackles, which is really important. Uh, did it more than ever la this uh, this year. Yeah, he said, oh yeah, 2020. Yeah, um, but no, in 2019, uh, last year, he did it. He did it at the best. Not only that though, like, yeah, he dropped and he dropped five passes. He doesn't have the best hands, obviously, but I think he gets it done. Over a thousand scrimmage yards. Not the worst starter. Not the worst. Oh. That's though. James Cook has turned to be a starter here. He is not a talented runner. I'll put it that way. He's not that explosive. He's not that, um, I don't know how to put it. He's a natural receiving back, uh, out of the backfield, but he can still run the ball pretty well. Like, he's just not a natural runner. Like, in the red zone, he's not, you don't want him running in the red zone. His vision isn't great. His speed, yeah, he's got good speed, not great speed, though. And his explosiveness and his ability to read blocks is just not there right now. Zach Moss, he had a really bad year last year, I'll be straight up honest with you, like, was really bad. Fumbled a couple times, but, uh, two years ago in 2020, he was really good, uh, like, really good, like, he was a bowling ball, but, he, I don't, I think he'll be, like, a third backup, uh, uh, running back, he just looked so bad last year. Duke Johnson, I like Duke Johnson a lot, I think he's, um, good receiving back, uh, and even more importantly, this dude knows what he's doing, so, that's really important. But yeah, I like Duke Johnson a lot. Running back wise, give him a B minus. I don't think it's the best room in the world. I don't think it's the worst. They don't really have a power back, and like James Cook, like I said, not a great runner runner. Because on film, like you watch him, he doesn't read blocks well, like at all. He kind of relies on getting good penetration by the offensive line, and he doesn't have. He gets absolutely stuffed. So yeah, that's why. And he doesn't break a ton of tackles. Time this wide receiver position though. Oh yeah, and oh yeah. Um, I just watched Devon uh, Allen's touchdown. It was elite. Like, and Reed Center has a really good arm now. That's pretty good. Uh, but. 
Jack on the receivers, though. Stephon Diggs, he's the number one. Top ten receiver, arguably top five. A little bit of a down year in terms of yardage compared to what he had in 2020. But he had the most touchdowns he ever had in his career. That's saying something. None of that, though. He, like, really was able to get downfield a lot better than you would think. Like, yeah, maybe he didn't have, like, the best, like, but he got downfield a lot quicker than I, and if you watch him, next gen stats really does it uh, well as well, that as well. He got downfield really well, his release improved from my, uh, last year, and in the red zone, he really came a much bigger presence, he came more of an all-around good receiver, and then Gabriel Davis, prime candidate to break out this year, he had four touchdowns in the AFC Divisional Playoff game on CBS. Uh, but yeah, Gabe Davis, I think he'll be really good this year. He needs to be so much more consistent with his release and running, though. He can get that going, I think he'll be good. Isaiah McKenzie, really underrated guy, I think, this year. He, he's more, he's really fast, obviously. His route running's actually decent, too. Like, he's never been a better runner. I think he'll be a good slot guy as well. Gabe is a crowd, of course, he is the slot guy, he's gonna be here. But, I think uh, Isaiah McKenzie might actually start as that slot guy because he can, he's a lot faster than Jameson Crowder. Of course, not better in the red zone, of course, not more polished than a route runner. Like I said, Isaiah McKenzie's more of a raw talent player, um, but Jameson Crowder, obviously good slot. She, uh, uh, what is it called? Those who are out of Boise State, this dude's a monster. He is basically your Debo Samuel in a way, except he is, like, more of a receiver. <laughs> but, yeah, Cleo Shakir is a stud. Isaiah ha uh, Hodgkins, uh, this dude works really hard. I don't think he's really that talented at anything. He's more of a possession receiver who has good route running, but and his hands are decent as well. But he's not going to get you really touchdowns or, like, great routing. Jig, uh, Kumbaro. Other than playing with Aaron Rodgers, he's kind of bad, I'll be honest with you. But yeah, that's kind of this receiving core for you. I'm not giving him A tier, but I'm going to B plus because, it, it, like, they've got good depth. But I don't think Gabe, Gabe Davis should be really good this year. But we don't know for sure. So I got to give him a 16 out of 20. Pretty darn good. Not, like, an elite receiving core, but it's a good receiving core. Time for the tight end position. Okay, Dawson Knox really stepped up last year a lot. He had 587 yards and 9 touchdowns. And not only that, though, he's never been a good blocker, but actually last year, he kind of stepped up a little, and he showed his athleticism a lot. Of course, his brother died, I think it was Luke Dawson, uh, earlier this week. That's really sad, um, but I hope I hope he I hope he can have a really strong season. I think he'll have his best season yet, though. Like I said, 69 catch percentage, he was really efficient when he got the ball. Not only that, though, he uh, really improved on his drop percentage, only 5.6 last year after having 20% in 2019. Kind of like a Josh Allen improvement, steady improvement. Uh, but not only that, though, his yak yardage was huge, 277, almost half his yards. And his uh, average depth target, where is it? Yeah, 7.4 is lower than it was before, which means he can, he's getting underneath more. And that also means he's, be he's better as a blocker. And if we look at it, he, he's really good at sustaining outside blocks now because he's gotten better at it. But, of course, he's still not good in pass pro at, like, on a normal basis. So, for that reason, he's not the best guy. Uh, O.J. Howard, he's got to be good this year, like... It's his first season where he's out at Tampa. Like, he better be good this year. I'm just saying that. Um, first round pick in 2017. Showed a lot of potential. Hasn't really shown it yet. But uh, he's got to be good this year. Tommy Sweeney, not a bad backup whatsoever. Really good blocker. But that's kind of all I have to say. <laughs> he could be a good third tight end. Okay. B for this tight end regard. I think it's really good. They got two guys that... O.J. Howard, if he started, that wouldn't be the worst guy in the world. Of course, he hasn't been, like, a good starter. Like, he hasn't really gotten much targets at all for that reason. But, uh, overall, I like this tight end a lot. 3.67 plus 8 is 11.67 out of 15. Good. Time for this offensive line. Uh, Deion Dawkins. Proven he's a, he's a solid left tackle. I wouldn't exactly call him a wall because he does give up sacks. Like, he gave up four last year, which isn't wor the worst, but he, he, he gives some sacks. Really good run blocker, though, can hold blocks a long time. And when it comes against finesse passers, pass rushers, pass absolutely dominates them. Not really with those power guys that can absolutely blow by you, because, to be honest, he's not the strongest dude, but good player. Tommy Doyle, as a backup, and um, and he's a rookie last year, fifth-round pick. Uh, Tom did Tommy Doyle really even get any playing time last year? Why do I think he didn't? Like, did he get any? Yeah, he got literally no playing time. Uh, yeah, but Tommy Doyle, gonna be a backup this year. We'll see what he can do, I guess. Roger Saffold, huge pickup. Uh, this dude's the most underrated player in the NFL. Of course, last year, got hurt. Uh, didn't look great, particularly. But, in the season before, he was one of the best run blockers in the NFL. Uh, that was undoubtedly. Uh, but like, we, like I said, 69.3 last year, but in 2020, like, really, like, yeah, maybe not that. Because he's, I'll be honest, he's not the best uh, pass blocker, but... If this loads in a second, yeah. He, um, 
I think PFF Gradient really loved. This dude gets it done in the run game better than anyone. Like, really, he's elite. Iggy Bodiger, what is his injury? Achilles. Oh, yeah, um. That is not good. But, um, Iggy Bodiger, not a bad backup, really athletic, uh, I guess he gets it done. Greg Van Rowan, another guy who started, a uh, good vet. Uh, Mitch Morris, a little overrated, I think, uh, he's not as good as he used to be, but he's still a good center, like, good run blocker, decent pass, uh, pass blocker, I don't think he's as good as he used to be, but still struggles to, uh, sustain blocks. Other than that, he's fine. Greg Vance, he's been their he's been a backup his whole career. Like that's really just the truth. Ryan Bates, Ryan Bates, I don't really think he should be a starter, but he is because they don't really have anyone else. And of course, Ryan Bates actually played well last year in the limited playing time, only 294 snaps. PFF grade doesn't say so, but whatever. On to film, he looked good. Cody White, uh, uh, Ford was so bad, he's bad. Like not should be a starter. David Questionberry, elite, like elite last year. He was like the reason that run game worked. He, not only that, though, but he can be a really good leanbacker. Is he the best in, uh, uh, pass pro? Na not really, but he's elite. Spencer, well, he was elite last year. Spencer Brown, eh, third round pick. He, he, he got it done, I guess, last year. Um, He struggled a little bit, but I don't think he had, like, the worst season. In, especially in pa uh, pass pro, he wasn't the worst, but a lot to be desired, I'll put it that way. He only gave one sack, and I'm kind of surprised he only gave one sack. But on special teams, he kind of did get dominated a little bit. Of course, Bobby Hart's awful. Like, do not start him. But overall, this is a decent offensive line. I don't think his offensive line is B caliber. I'm going to be minus because, yeah, it's good, but is it that great? I don't think so. Their run game really struggled last year because none of, they didn't have guys who could sustain blocks and create penetration. So for that reason, I got to give them a, what they get, which is a B minus. 3.33 plus, what was it? Oh, yeah, 11.33 out of 15. Time for this overall roster grade and average. Uh, overall offensive uh, grade and average. Okay, the points is 84 out of 100, which uh, is B+. Plus. I think they're an A caliber offense, though. Um, really good offense. Uh, they were, like, second in the NFL in scoring. Uh, they're going to really work out because Josh Allen is just so good. Like, the reason I'm giving him an A is because he's here, and he is literally their offense, obviously. But... Not that, like, they've got a solid group of supporters. Like, good, really good receiving core, good tight end group, good running back room, or decent running back room, and good offensive line. With that, they get, like, an A, because Josh Allen's just that good. Yeah, it, um, it doesn't really look like that in terms of the talent on the other positions, but, yeah, A. Time is linebacking core, though. Of course, they run a 4-3, so we'll go through the linebacking core right now. Uh, Tyler Dodson, uh, Tyrell Dodson, my bad. Third season in the NFL, UDFA. Didn't get much playing time last year, but... I'll be honest with you, this dude came out against some tight ends and just absolutely, like, bullied them. Um, of course, he did, wasn't expected to do that coming into the NFL, but, hey, he got it done. Like, yeah, 83.3 against, but, in uh, t uh, 14 air yards, but really didn't get much playing time at all, but, like, he d he was good against tight ends last year. Okay, we'll get, he will start this year, too. Joe Giles Harris, uh, why do I think he, it's his second season in the NFL? Never heard of this dude, though, that's the one pro thing, like, never heard of him. Yeah, it was that a Duke. We'll see what we can do. Tremaine Edmonds, uh, very, um, uh, inconsistent. I'll put it that way. Uh, youngest player in the NFL coming in. Uh, he has been, he, he struggled a lot last year, really. Uh, he struggled a lot his whole career, but just really inconsistent. It's kind of like a mixed bag with him. Really just a mixed bag, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but I guess he's decent. Like, I don't know how to say it. Like, He's so athletic and so, like, good, but, like, he's not good. To, uh, and he's just, he's raw. He's <laughs> still raw. Till we're not doing up pick out of Baylor. He's expected to be the more guy who can uh, just, like, be better, I guess. But, of course, Tremaine Edmonds starting because he, he offers more than Terrell Bernard. But uh, Terrell Bernard was picked to be decent in pass coverage. He's not going to lock guys down. He's just not fast enough. And, as well, he just needs to be able to hit, hit run uh, gaps really well, especially those eight gaps. When, he get, when they fit the run right, Terrell Bernard, he'd be a really good player. Matt Milano, uh, playmaker, really underrated. Uh, not the best in pass coverage, though. He's never been the best, but he gets it done. Like, ooh, the low completion percentage. This is against running backs, remember that. Uh, I don't think he's ever been the best, but, and of course, the missed tackle percentage, it, it's been high. He's never been a great tackler as well, but he's a really good player. My bad. On film, he, he doesn't look great and pass coverage. Probably because he's not great at tackling. But, like, yeah. Really good player. 
No, that though, uh, Bill Spectre behind him, uh, seventh round pick out of Clemson, I'm really, uh, excited to see what he can do, of course, he played in that college football playoff, got absolutely destroyed, uh, last year, though, he, was, he had a quite good year at Clemson, so, coming into this year, he needs to be that guy who can really, um, tackle well, because they, out of all these linebackers, the, uh, Bill Spectre is the one who's, who's uh, expected to be the best tackler. I don't know, should I give him a C plus? I'm gonna give him a C plus, because depth is decent, uh, the start is kind of a mixed bag, I'm being honest there, uh, I like Matt Milano, but other than that, I don't know who's sure for sure. So, yeah. Time for this defensive line. Okay. Uh, defensive line. We got to kind of be careful with the passers. But Ed Oliver uh, stepped up big time last year. Like, was really good. With that rotation they've got going, really good. Daquan Jones, big man. Not He's actually pretty athletic. That's the reason he can get off quarterback. But at 30 years old, he's kind of more that run stopper. But he can, he can still get off quarterback pretty well. Jordan Phillips. Uh, um, uh, run special, run specialist, but with the fact he's so powerful and just so explosive off the line, that's helped him become more of a pass rusher as well. Tim Settle, he is more of that guy you want just sitting there on the goal line and just absolutely stuffing the runner. Like he's got quick hands as well, even for a big guy, he got he's got quick hands. Um, Greg Rousseau, kind of like an expected rookie year last year, he struggled somewhat, but. In that rotation, I think he played somewhat well. And of course, uh, Boogie Basham, third round pick, or second round pick, yes, if you want. Uh, this dude is a finesse pass rusher with power, but I do think his second hand needs to improve uh, from half last year, but he's still good. AJ Epineza really was just a disappointment last year. Of course, 20, 20 second round pick, um, coming from Buffalo, obviously. But I think AJ Epineza, he's going to be good this year. Of course, you got Shaq Lawson there as well. Shaq Lawson's been a solid pass rusher his whole career. Von Miller, of course, he's their number one guy. Coming over from the Rams, uh, really just pa uh, last pass last year. He's 33 though. Um, could be good this year though. Yeah, that's the defensive line. I'll give the defensive line an A minus. Uh, not I can't give it anything higher though because uh they've got really good depth. But other than like Von Miller, I don't know if it's the elite offense defensive line. There's not like I don't know what to say. Like they're not gonna be like they're not gonna like at. In, our, like, in a sun, snowstorm, they're not going to be the defensive line that's going to absolutely shut you down. But they're over, other than that, they're really, really, really good. So, 14.33 out of 15. Time for this pass rush. Okay, this rotation's really, really good. You got Von Miller as your number one guy. He's the guy who, who guys are going to double team. Other, Greg Rousseau's their second guy. Then you got Boogie Basham. AJ Epinez is fourth, and you got Shaq Lawson. So you got five guys, edge rushers, that are really good. Up the middle, Ed Oliver's going to create a lot of penetration and really use his power to get to the quarterback. Daquan Jones is going to help out there as well. He'll kind of eat up blocks as well. Uh, Jordan Phillips really has quick hands, like I said again, even for a, and he's explosive. So when you have Jordan Phillips like that, he can get after the quarterback as well, kind of like these edge rushers. But if there are big men on him, he's going to get, like, if there's a, if he gets double teamed, not going to get the quarterback. Tim Settle, yeah, like I said, he's kind of that goal line guy. Who knows? He could get to the quarterback if he needs to as well. But penetration up front, I really like. It is, I'm in love with this rotation. The thing is, I can't, I'll give him an A minus, but, you know, I'll give him an A because I know it's going to work out. But that being said, are they an elite pass rush group? Yeah, they're, they're elite. But I can't give him an A plus because there is a chance they do get shut down at points. I have to be completely honest there because their run defense is not that, is, isn't really that great. I'll be honest with you. It just won't be because they're just not consistent. But, man, I mean, man, they're gonna, if, if that run defense can step up, dang, they're going to have some good pass rushers. Okay, time for this cornerback position. Okay, let's start out. Tredavious White. Um, yeah, he didn't practice today, which is a little concerning. But Tredavious White, uh, of course, Torrey's ACL last year, top five corner. He could be even, honestly, if you argued him number one, I wouldn't be that mad. Dan Jackson, um, other than the time he got absolutely, like, burned by, um, Tyreek Hill, uh, he's a fast corner, and he got burned by the fastest dude. Yeah, his team upgrade isn't great, but I think there's a lot to be uh, uh, happy about with him. He's really good. He doesn't get beat deep. Underneath, yeah, maybe, and he's not the most sure tackler, but Dan Jackson's a good corner. Teron Jets, of course, the slot guy. Had that huge interception last year. He's a really good playmaking corner. Not the quickest dude, not the most agile guy, but he makes up for it with his playmaking ability. Kyer Elm, his length and his hip fluidity are just so bad. Other than that, though, I don't like him as a player. Uh, like, that's literally the only concern I have with him. Like, yup. I just think it's going to kill him in the NFL, though. Like, I think he's going to be a bust. I don't like him whatsoever. 
but I could be completely wrong. There you go. Uh, but Kairom, his hit fluidity and his length are just bad, 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 bad. He's not slow. He's got all that. He's got all that. And he can actually read the quarterback's eyes well. He's, like, good at reading the quarterback in zone. But in man, his hit fluidity is horrific. His agility, though, his agility, like, his agility isn't bad. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I didn't think it was good, but I had to kind of, like, rewatch his film and all that. But his agility isn't bad. His hip fluidity is terrible. He can't hip, uh, flip his head well at all. Hip fluidity, terrible. As well as that, hip fluidity is bad. Whatever. As well as that, his ball skills are not bad. I'd say his AI coordination is not great as well because of his hip fluidity isn't good. As well as that, um, what is it called? His length is not great. He's not going to um, be able to knock a pass down from diving way over here. It's just not going to happen. As well as that, he's not really going to make a huge tackle like one arm. He's not going to do that. Serene Neal, though, at Jacksonville State. Uh, this dude's decent, but I don't know if he can be that island corner. Like, they might need him to be at times. But other than that, I don't think he's bad. Uh, this cornerback from other than Kyrie, who I don't like, it's good. Okay, uh, B plus. I can't give him an A. I just I struggle with that. Uh, because Danny Jackson, yeah, he was good last year, but I don't know if he's gonna be a great number two. They did lose Levi Wallace, who wasn't great, but the cornerback room, yeah, Trey Davies White's really good, but Teron Johnson's good in the slot. But I don't think he or Ella will be good. He struggled so far in the preseason, like I suspected. But 16 out of 20 is fair. Um, I want to give him higher, but I just can't. Like Kyrie Allen is just too much flesh and blood. Time for the safety position. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> it's pretty good. Jordan Poirier, Michael Hyde, this is probably the most uh, consistent safety duo in the NFL. Of course, uh, Jordan Poirier is a little hurt, but uh, Jordan Poirier, be honest with you, not the best, best tackler, but he's really good in coverage, and he makes tons of plays. And again, Jordan Poirier is elite. Michael Hyde, even better. Like, I think he's even better. Yeah, they're both a little older, but these two guys are so good. So, so good. Um... Jaquan Johnson, not a bad backup. I honestly don't think so, because he kind of does fit the mold of that guy who can tackle and as well can cover linebacker, um, tight ends well as well. So yeah, Jaquan Johnson's good. Tamir uh, Hamilton, or Hamlin, my bad. Uh, six round pick out of Pittsburgh. He really did struggle a little bit last year on the few snaps he played, and in preseason so far, he was actually been pretty good. Uh, just needs to get better in zone, especially being that one high safety. If he can be, if he can get better being that island guy deep, I think he'll be fine. Obvious A plus like there's a reason when you watch this defense it, it's it's the best in the NFL. Why was it the best in the NFL in terms of points per game last year? It's the second, it's these safeties and this defensive line and the pass rush. They work together so well, and the fact their cornerbacks didn't weren't horrible really helped out as well. Time for this defensive overall average grade though. Okay, 87 out of 100 for the points. Uh, a minus. I'm gonna give them an A. Uh, this defense. Here's why I'm not giving me an A+. Plus. Statistically, they're going to be, a, like, the best defense in the NFL, I think, this year. Here's the problem. Yeah, you got him, Matt Von Miller. He might help out. But, these corners could come to bite you like they did last year. I just, I'm just saying, it's really not that much better than it was last year. Yeah, maybe you got a Teron Johnson. Maybe he's better. And you got uh, Trey White back. But, I think that could bite him in the foot again. And the linebackers are not that good. If their linebackers were just like, like they're good, they're like they're not like obviously they're good, but like if they were like good, good, this defense would obviously be an A plus. That's the only reason they're not an A plus. Time for the special teams unit. Okay, Tyler Bass, huge foot. He kicks bombs. Really kicker. Uh, didn't have the most efficient in terms of the uh, uh what's called field goals, but cuts because he plays in Buffalo. Matt Hawk, good con uh, punter. Not the best, but I think he's a good punter. Big foot as well. Um, Tav uh, Tavon Austin, they find a the punt returner. If he doesn't muff the punts, he's really good. Isaiah McKenzie, kick returner. He's been really good his whole career, really. Like, that's just how he's been as a returner. Reed Ferguson, solid long snapper. Overall, this special team's not the best, but definitely not the worst. B minus. That's the special teams. I'll give them B minus. 3.33 plus uh, 4, 7.67. Or 7.33 out of 10. Pretty good. Time for this de overall team depth grade. Okay. Linebacker depth. I mean, my bad. Running back depth. Uh, B minus. Uh, wide receiver depth. B plus. Uh, tight end depth. Uh, B plus. Uh, offensive line depth. 
B plus. Overall offensive uh, depth, I guess, is B. Uh, yeah, B plus. Uh, linebacker depth, uh, C plus. Defensive line depth, A plus. Pass rush depth, B uh, A minus. Cornerback depth, B. Safety depth, uh, A. Or no, my bad. My bad. Uh, a minus. Overall defensive depth, uh, A minus. Overall team depth, oh shoot, A minus, B plus, A minus, B plus, B plus, uh, good depth on the team, I don't think it's the best in the world, but I think it's really good, 20 out of 25, time for this overall roster grade, here you go, Bills fans, total points, 198 out of 235, which I think the Rams had more points when I did their grades, kind of biased, that's just how it kind of works, but it's obviously an A, I take him an A plus, um, this is not a perfect roster, but it's pretty darn close, it's really, really good, um, if they had, like, a little more depth in this linebacking core wasn't so, I don't know how to say it, inconsistent, then they'd get an A+. Plus, or, like, not balanced. Yeah, they're not as balanced as you like. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> Bills get an A. Really good, really, 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 really good roster. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe. See you in the next video. To the left. Brady looking the other way. Brady going deep down the right side.